This video tutorial is brought to you by TipSquirrel at www.tipsquirrel.com. For all the best Photoshop and Lightroom tips and tricks, follow at TipSquirrel on Twitter or go to Facebook.com slash TipSquirrel. Hello everybody, Mike Hoffman here, and today we're going to be taking these basic shapes and text in Photoshop and creating a vintage, sort of a rustic looking effect. And here I've got the finished image. This is what we're going after. So we've got some distressed wood and some some faded and chipped text here that we're going to be creating, starting with this image here in Photoshop. Now, this image consists of three essential sections. We have on the top here a yellow fish outline with some text. Below that, we have a green sign with some text also set in a circular fashion. And then we have our wooden backdrop. So let's get started with the green sign first. And if we open up this group that I've created, we can see that there are some rings, some text, and the sign itself. And what we want to do, let's go ahead and turn off everything except for the background of the sign. And we want to create a wooden texture to this sign. And what better way to do that than use the background itself. So I've added a copy of the background here, rotated 90 degrees. And what I want to do is clip this so that it's only visible where the green sign is. So I'll hover my cursor between the wood texture and the sign layer. And then holding the Alt key on Windows or the Option key on a Mac, the cursor will change and I can click and that will clip this. If we turn the background layer off for just a moment, you can see that the wood texture is now visible only where the green sign was. We'll turn the background layer back on and we'll select the wood texture. Now at this point we can't see any of the green, but if we change the blending mode of this layer to multiply, this will allow the darker parts of the layer to show through on top of the green backdrop. And that's what we've got here. So this is looking pretty good. Now a couple things we need to do, it's a bit dark, so I think we'll choose the sign layer and we'll add a new adjustment layer and we'll just quickly go to a, a hue saturation clipped by enabling this option and notice the icon here in the layers panel this is also clipped to just the sign we'll bump the brightness up just a bit that's good now this is pretty faded so we'll want to give this a little more pop so with the wood texture layer selected we'll add another adjustment layer on the top, a curves layer, and again, we'll choose this option to create the clipping mask. Now we'll create some high contrast by dragging this down and dragging this section up here. And that looks pretty good. So now we've created some real pop to this and made it stand out quite a bit from the background. Now we've got one small issue here. We've got a portion of the sign with a knot in it, and there should be a hole there. So what we'll need to do is choose the sign layer and add a layer mask. Then we'll choose the brush tool and painting with the black color, we'll simply add some black to the layer mask to hide this section. So that looks pretty good. Now we've created our sign. Now it's time to add the text. And if we add the text in, we can see that it looks pretty good. However, we need to add the distress to it. And what we'll do in order to do that is we'll add a layer mask to the text, and then we'll borrow the texture from this wood, and we'll add it to those layer masks. Let's go ahead and turn those off for now. We'll leave that one on. And we'll turn off the backdrop. Now we've got just the wooden sign showing. Let's go ahead and select the sign layer and then we'll go to the channels panel. We'll click on the green channel and this is the one that has the best contrast given the green color. We'll control click or command click on a Mac to create a selection. Then we'll go back to the RGB channel and back to the layers panel. Now we can turn on one of our text layers and we'll select the actual layer mask here. Make sure the layer mask is selected with the double outline here and then we'll just press alt backspace or on a Mac that's option delete and you can see that that's filled our selection with black color however it's not looking very good we'll go ahead and deselect that 
and I'm going to alt click or on a Mac that's option click on the layer mask and let's see what's happened. So we've created this mask. Now this is about the opposite of what we want to do. So I'm simply going to press control I or command I to invert this mask. And when I do, let's go back by clicking on this T here. We'll go back and we can see now that we've done a much better job of creating the distressed texture. Now it's a little too faded. So what we'll do is we'll select this mask once again and bring up the levels command by pressing control L on Windows or command L on a Mac. And now we'll simply adjust the levels to provide a little more contrast and make this look the way that we want. So I think that's looking pretty good right there. Now we can take this layer mask, control click on it, and then we'll bring up the other text layer. We'll select this one and again alt backspace or option delete and then control I to invert the mask. And now we've got it. So there is our distressed text. Now let's go ahead and add our rings. And they're in normal mode right now. They're looking a little bit garish, but if we change these to overlay, it's going to blend in quite nicely. And there we have it. So now we've created our backdrop of the sign, and we're going to now bring in the top section, which is the fish outline with text here. And we're going to essentially follow the same steps in some cases here. So we've got our yellow fish outline, and now we can add a wood texture in. I'll go ahead and turn off the text. And with the wood texture selected, once again, we'll hold the Alt key on Windows or the Option key on a Mac to clip that layer. We'll change the blending mode to multiply. And this looks a little bit too intense, so I'm going to back the opacity down just a little bit, maybe to about there. Now let's go ahead and bring the text in. And I've got some layer styles that I've added here. So what we have is a bevel and emboss effect. And if I bring this up, you can see that I've got the bevel and emboss direction pointing down because I want this to be inset into the wood. We'll go ahead and click OK. And now we're going to take the fill opacity and dial the fill opacity all the way down. So now this looks like it's actually cut into the text. At this point, let's go ahead and bring in the backdrop and just to finalize the effect, here on this group, we can add layer effects at the group level. We'll simply click on effects, and I've already got some created here, so I'm just going to turn them on. But I've added a bevel and emboss to the outline of the fish, and as well a bit of a drop shadow. I'll go ahead and bring these up so you can see the parameters that I've used for the drop shadow and for the bevel and emboss. And in this case, the bevel and emboss direction is up. Now we want to also create a little bit of an effect for the green sign against the background. So let's go ahead and open that up and go down to the sign layer. And again, I've got some effects here that I've created. I'll go ahead and turn those on. And you can see that what I've done is created just a little bit of a stroke effect using the dark green color from the sign and added a drop shadow. So that sets this sign off from the background a little bit and contributes to the overall appearance of the sign itself. At this point, our effect is complete, and we've got a nice rustic looking sign that we've created using a few layer tricks and layer effects within Photoshop. Give this stuff a try. There's no end to the ways that you can combine these types of effects together and create a unique look all your own. My name is Mike Hoffman. My website is hoffmanartdesign.com. You'll find a variety of Photoshop and Lightroom tips and tricks there, as well as photography and other related information. Or you can follow me on mhoffman2001 on Twitter, and you can find me on Google Plus by simply going to gplusmikehoffman.com. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.